this is Chris. Hopefully, everyone is having an awesome day. And welcome to the final part of my showcase on the Mattered Artifice mod, where I will be teaching you everything you should know about animated constructs, which are robots that can complete a bunch of tasks for you. And you also have the wellsprings, which will allow you to make some epic items like the armor sets we both have on. So we are finally going to build some constructs. So constructs are basically robots that can do anything for you. And this is why I'm so excited to cover this. So they could be your farmer, they could be your bodyguard, they could be your runesmither, they could be almost anything you want. As long as you have the imagination to actually create everything and yeah, program them. Because you will have to program them. But don't worry, it's not that complicated. So now, let's get started by going to the new section in the Codex Arcana. And that section is the Construct section. So we're just gonna go into here and you'll see that there's a bunch of things here. But the first thing you want to worry about is the animated construct section. So here, I'll tell you all of the basics. And to get started, you will obviously need something to build them on. And that is the construct workbench. So this is crafted with one chamory gem, one stone of any type, two glyphs of any type, and then two logs of any type. And I'm just gonna abandon these two for later because you won't need them for now. But let's just continue on. So for the construct, you will need a head, a torso, legs and then two arms because you obviously will need arms but what if you, the robots never needed any arms that could do stuff with their heads but yep you still need the two arms because else it just won't work and now I'm just gonna keep going through this section until we arrive at the material section so each one of these materials does have its advantages and disadvantages so wood will float because obviously wood does float but unfortunately it does have uh, yeah trouble with fire because it's wood and then we have stone which will sink like a rock in the water so yep this this guy can't swim and he probably will drown if you don't do something about it and there are things that you can actually do about that and you can just keep reading through all of these and then we have arrived at the next section so here it tells you how to set up your workbench and before you continue you will need some chabrite crystals and you will need exactly eight of them for this to actually work so here we're just gonna go over a recipe so you will just need eight chamberite crystals and one die of any type and it doesn't matter which color you choose they do the exact same thing so don't worry about that and in the newer versions they do look different so yeah do, do not get confused if you're the newer versions but here it just looks more cartoony and i have nothing against the cartoony look so now, here it just tells you that you needed 8 of them, and then you just have to have them within 5 blocks of the workbench, and it doesn't matter, they don't care if they're upside down, they're sideways, you can do whatever you want with them. So let me just show you, so I'm just gonna grab this crystal, gonna place it like this, I'm gonna try to place it upside down, that, that keeps scaring me, so yeah, you can just place it however you want, and now... Let's continue on to the last thing you should know. So to bring life to your constructs, you will need to apply affinities to all eight of your chamberite crystals. And currently, there are six affinities. So we have the air affinity, which makes your constructs faster. And if you apply all eight of them, they literally turn into Sonic. And they barely even know where to go. So you better be careful if you make them that fast. Next, we have Arcade, and this makes them do 5% more magic damage. And this is used when they're using their cannon so they can attack with magic. Yes, they literally do have a cannon. Next, we have Earth, which makes them more resistant to damage. And this is probably great if your construct is made of wood or any other weaker material or if it's a warrior. Next, we have the Ender, and it makes them carry many more things with their hands. And yes, they will be able to carry stuff, because they obviously need stuff to work with. Next, we have the Fire one, and this literally just sets things on fire once they use their blade to attack their enemies. And the last one we have is Water, and this makes your constructs more buoyant, so it's really useful if your construct is a heavy boy. And next, we just have everything else, which you don't need to worry about because I'm about to teach it to you and I just have a spell that I wanted to show you and you may be asking why am I showing a random spell and this is because there are construct 
parts inside of this spell, and this spell is called Rift. So you heard me right, there are construct parts in here. So this is self rift and now I'm just gonna right click and in here you'll see that I have all of my construct parts. So let's just get them all out of here. So I'm gonna grab its smart head. I'm gonna grab its thick body, its thick legs, its grabber arm, and then its blade. And yes, this can be used for killing, but it also can be used for farming, which one of them includes killing, and the other one includes actually killing plants too. So yep, they're all that's for killing. And there's one more thing that I forgot, and this is really important. So you will need the construct control rod. So this is crafted with three leather quartz, one construct frame rod, which is made with rune smithing, and then one golden nugget. And now it is time for me to actually place these parts. So we're gonna place its head, we're gonna place its body, we're gonna place its legs, and yes, I'm right clicking, and I'm just gonna put its grabber on, and its sword, and now he is ready to go and destroy, <laughs> and he's pretty much brain dead until you apply some affinities. So let's just get a few affinities here. So the first one I want to apply is the water affinity. And yes, you have to actually shoot this spell. You can't just use self or else this won't work because yeah, that is uh, uh, just for yourself. So all you want to do is just shoot the crystal and it should absorb your spell. And it doesn't matter which type of spell you use as long as it, it yeah, it has the affinity on it. So this one had the water affinity because it was a water based spell. So it doesn't even have to make sense, it, it, it just has to work. So now I'm just gonna apply a few other effects. So how about we apply some wind so he can be like Sonic and now we're just gonna apply some earth so he can be ready to destroy without dying and now it is time to revive this guy wait revive he's pretty much brain dead he was brain dead so yeah i don't think it's even revive it's just bringing him to life just look at all of the magic coming into him and now he is alive and just look at this dude and he's kind of freaking out and by the way you will need a smart head for some of the more complex commands because apparently the standard ones are too dumb to actually understand those commands and he will be able to do some of the other commands and well, was he just dancing uh, i really love this dude now to get this guy moving you will need a few things like the construct control rod which i showed you earlier so let's just grab it from here and you may notice another control rod and this is the construct diagnostic rod so it's really optional and you should only use it once you're actually having trouble with your constructs so the recipe for this is just one die and one construct control rod so yes apparently painting it changes its function and now Let's actually show something off before we actually start. So I'm just going to hit F3 and B and then we're just going to see his hitbox. So this is his hitbox and this is the only place where you can use the wand. So yes, you have to use it on his legs. His head does not work and he, he actually can't. It, nothing will happen with this. What the flip is this? I, I have no idea what this is. Apparently there's something in visible okay you know what? we're just gonna ignore that so let's just get back to this so i'm just gonna hit f3 and b and now we are ready so we're gonna tap him on the legs with this control rod so we're just gonna right click and now he has been uh, assigned to this and now we're just gonna right click on the ground and he's gonna start following me and just look at how quick this dude is he's just so fast imagine if we gave him even more air and then we're just gonna take him over here and we're gonna assign him a job and yes i did forget about something so if you want to stop your constructs from moving around all you have to do is just double click with your construct control rod and he should stay there like a good boy just look at this guy he's just gonna permanently stay there until i tell him to move again and there's one more important thing and yes i know I keep saying that, but this is the last one, I promise. So you will need plenty of rune markings for this, because almost all of these commands are gonna use lots of these. And now let's actually program our construct. And before we do that, you will need a load star. So the way you craft a load star is with four chamberate gems, three obsidian, and two golden ingots. And now let's actually capture this guy. So we're gonna click on them legs, click on the load star, and now he has dude, just listen to me. So here we go. So we have attached him to the load star and now you have to 
make sure that you have a lever with the redstone signal or else he's gonna start following the commands while you start programming this. And now let's go into the ender chest, which he strategically placed while he was doing a cut. So let's just grab everything in here. So here we have two roots of marking, and this is for the more basic of the commands. And the command I'm about to show you is the move command. So as you can see, we have two points right here. So we have this one right here and this one right here. And now we're just going to enter the load star by right clicking. And here we have a menu and you can just left click to add all of these. So we're just going to add a move command and add another one. And then I'm going to add a third one just to show you what happens if you want to get rid of one of them. So all you want to do is just hold down your right mouse button and then left click while still holding down the right mouse button so we're just gonna click once and here we go we have gotten rid of it and we only have these two move commands and now to actually enter these and put something into them what you want to do is just left click so yeah very simple and you can just even shift left click and it just automatically put it in there so we have our first one and now we have our second one and now we are ready so let's just get rid of this i guess before we actually deactivate the lever i'm going to show you what this construct diagnostic rod does stop dancing dude so we're just gonna click on him and yeah 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 i've actually tried this before so he says i don't have any points i'm gonna skip this on my way to player i'll stay around right here boss and yeah there are plenty of things and now let's turn off the lever so he's just gonna come running like a maniac and just look at him he, he this is complete insanity he, he's just moving so quickly and now we're just gonna deactivate it because i'm gonna show you one last move command so we could be done with this part i guess i'm gonna grab all of the, the runes of markings again so here we have four points and now we're just gonna go over here we're gonna get rid of all of this and yes it won't give you back the runes of markings once you actually delete all of that and now let's just go back in here and i'm gonna click on patrol and patrol gives you four points and this is a little bit different from the move command because he will actually start destroying stuff once he's actually using that and now let's just wait for the guy to start doing things once we flip the lever and he's just gonna go between all of the points while guarding and yes he's now my guard dog i mean my guard robot and now you may be wondering what do you do if you want to change his life purpose and change his body so he can do so all you want to do is just um, get his attention okay you know what let's just stop this first i really think he doesn't like the idea of someone who doesn't have a medical license or an engineering degree performing reconstructive surgery on him but you know what i am the doctor that will do it so i'm just gonna click on them legs again and now i'm just gonna go to the construct workbench and i'm just gonna right click on it and he's just gonna come running at it and then lay down okay you're doing okay <laughs> yeah he teleported straight through those mana crystals but you know what he's magic so it doesn't matter it's really explainable so I'm just gonna go in here and now here we have his new arms. So first we're just gonna grab the shield, the stone mana torso, and then the right cannon. So yes, you will actually need parts for some of the other parts. So for this mana cannon, which looks totally epic, I'm just gonna right click on him. Just look at that thing, that thing looks super awesome. And then I'm just gonna install the mana torso because this is really necessary for it to work. And it does have a tank for some mana. So you can see the tank down there, it's just gonna be poking through the bed apparently. And then we're just gonna have this shield right there. So let's install the shield. So we're just gonna right click and now he can defend himself even while using magic. And yes, you do get the parts back once you actually install the new ones. So don't worry about wasting parts. And now we just have to install some of the affinities. And by the way, the next part you're gonna see was recorded by me like a month ago. So I sound drastically different and probably a little bit annoying. And now we're just gonna right click, bring him. <laughs> I don't mean set them on fire. Do not set them on fire. And then we're just gonna right click and bring him to life while he's on fire. 
<laughs> He's on fire while getting brought to life. I don't know which one. Okay, I take the water, put it out. And now here we have a beast of a robot. And yeah, yeah we should have given him reinforced legs. But anyway, we're just going to make him stand guard again. So, dude, come over here. I'm going to teach you how to actually fight with magic. So, we're just going to set him to this crystal right here. And he's just going to run around. And by the way, he does need the mana crystal nearby. So, you'll see the mana crystal shoot into his body. And you'll see how much charge he has back here. So, he barely has any charge. So, we're just going to bring another crystal closer to him. So, let's put a crystal right around here. And he should be charged by both crystals. So, we do have plenty of crystals nearby. And now, he's almost fully charged. And let's make him attack something. So, let's set a zombie over here. And since the airship is above us it's not going to actually affect him being burnt so now let's get them to attack the zombie and he's gonna go like peace mode and try to destroy him and yeah i put him a little bit too close so now we're just gonna try this again and yeah this is what happens when he gets destroyed he literally just falls apart so this time we've added some arcane affinities so we're just gonna make him go over here and now he's gonna actually fight from a distance this time so i've learned my lesson so we're just gonna put them like right around around here so let's him get close to him and now he's gonna start shooting just look at this dude this dude looks so freaking epic while shooting magic like he's gonna keep shooting magic and yeah he okay, kind of shot some water magic at him so yeah the, if you used fire he could have been a lot better he could have set everything on fire and he will also fight a bunch of other things i think he'll fight an enderman let's actually see this and i know i should probably get going but i want to do some hands-on training so here we're just gonna place an enderman and we're just gonna put them nearby and he's gonna shoot the enderman so the enderman won't actually dodge this and it was probably a bad idea because now it's gonna die poor dude it's gonna die and he's just gonna keep fighting the enderman okay okay i'm just gonna let him fight it out and now he's dead again and you'll notice something oh broom the frick what is wrong with you so yeah sometimes they'll actually drop the body parts back and under man you should be ashamed of yourself it was so tiny and so helpless actually it wasn't tiny or helpless so now let's make this guy perform a real task and that is farming so we're just gonna make him a farmer and these are all the affinities i was using so that's why i started talking earlier that i wanted to and we're just gonna grab this guy and we're just gonna take him oh i left him behind so let's grab him and let's take him over here so he can become a farmer so follow me dude come over here and we're just gonna lock him up in here about I'm j i just did this so he won't actually escape because sometimes they'll get on the broom or get on an animal and then just start floating away i don't mean floating away but walking over the fence and now we have him in here and he is contained and don't worry dude yeah, you can stop i'm just gonna stop him right here you know what i'm just gonna attach him to the crystal so we're just gonna do this and we're just gonna turn it off yeah it's already turned off and now let's go in here and let's make all the stuff that he needs to actually start farming and by the way we will need a few other things so first we'll need some seeds and then we'll need some runes so here we have about one seed we don't need that many seeds and now we just need one rune so here we have some runes of barking so we're just gonna bark at the area first so it's about right here we're just gonna shift right click so we can get it right there and we're just gonna make him plant one block above so we're just gonna grab this and we're just gonna do this and now we we've actually selected this area to be farmed so i'm just gonna show it to you again so yeah i showed it earlier to you in the showcase but here we have the area where he's gonna farm so now we have everything we need to get started and let me say something really quick so something that i've noticed that uh, that was the most terrifying sound they both did at the same time anyway what i was gonna say is i've noticed that after working up the spot for a month i've noticed how much my energy level changes but anyway let's actually get to the fun things so we're just gonna actually make him plant some stuff so first we're just gonna make him take from the container so we're just gonna make him take some seeds over here and yes you actually do need to specify the container which i failed to notice so we're just gonna you know what i actually did mark the container so we we have the marked container so we're just gonna put it in here and we're just gonna replicate it so we have this right here so the next step is to actually plant the crops so we want him to plant all of this area so we're just gonna grab this one and this one 
and now he should plant in this area and don't worry about to pick up the broom has it covered and then we're just gonna make him harvest all of the plants so we're just gonna give him all of the coordinates again and yeah i had to go back and get the coordinates from this one right here and now let's actually make him work so he's just gonna grab some seeds and he's gonna start planting them and since we gave him the endorfinity he should now plant and dude what happened okay i can't figure out i can't figure out okay you know what to do all right so he's no longer broken i don't know what was wrong with him apparently i can write what what the frick i did not know you can write them what i did not know this no no how did i not notice this i did not know you could actually write him all right dude i'm gonna write on you <laughs> while you go farming and you know what let's actually help this guy so we're just gonna give him some bone meal oh this is weird i i never knew this apparently once i got on him he actually started working i don't know what is wrong with him but anyway we're just gonna make him do his job so dude okay you know what we should probably seal that off but we're just gonna grow all of these plants so he can actually start harvesting so dude start harvesting there we go he's gonna start harvesting all of these plants and here you have your basic farming robot and next i'm gonna show you how to make an animal farmer and then the lumberjack and then the runes bit so yes you can actually make runes and other things with the construct so now this guy is no longer a farmer he's gonna be a butcher slash animal farmer i don't know if, if, if that exists in real life dude, dude this there's someone who actually does both uh, you know what I, I, I don't want to ask these questions Questions because this is a little bit too deep for a video like this but anyway we're just gonna make him take from a container and we're just gonna make him take some weed over here and we're just gonna put the rune from the chest in there and now we are done with that one and we're just gonna make him breed so we're just gonna choose breed right here and we're just gonna choose the coordinates of where we want him to breed so here we're just gonna take these two since we'll need them later on and we're just gonna grab this butcher over here and oh that is a little bit dark of a symbol but anyway we're just gonna put this in here and now this is ready so let's actually hire him so dude i'm gonna murder something so now we're just gonna place this right here and we're just gonna activate it so dude is now gonna grab the wheat and he's gonna breed these two and then we're just gonna grab some more wheat so we can actually complete our task so we're just gonna leave him some here and now he has bred them and now let's make the baby grow up as fast as possible so he can become beef as fast as possible <laughs> all right so this guy is grown up and now he's gonna go full murder mode and dude are you gonna go full murder mode okay apparently he does not want to murder for some reason all right so he has decided to kill so yeah these guys get a little bit confused for a second but then they do their job and okay broom do your job so now he's gonna grab all of the steak and i thought he was gonna actually get cooked but apparently not finally a guy who knows how to make steak so yeah i set a bunch of fire affinities on this guy and he has finally done what i wanted i wanted some cooked beef oh yeah <laughs> all right I, I don't know what's wrong with me but anyway let's continue on to another one that is a little bit different than both of these since this guy is gonna be in charge of trees i'm gonna show you something you should know if they don't want to let go of whatever they have in their hand so we're just gonna right click with the control wand and now we're just gonna right click anywhere and you know what he doesn't want to move so let's do it again and now he has let go of the wheat and now he's ready to work so dude come over here we're gonna make you have an axe for a hand so this is the final basic task i'm gonna teach you guys before we move on to the insanity section over there so now this guy's gonna be a lumberjack hey dude do you want to be a lumberjack all right he's gonna be a lumberjack so now we're just gonna set him over here and now i'm just gonna show you what to do now so first we're just gonna have to take item from container like always so here we have our container marked and our oak sapling over here but this is where it's different so now he actually has to place a block at position so no longer does he have to place saplings he has to place a block at a position because the sapling is considered a block now we're just gonna make this a little bit taller so we can just mark it so we're just gonna mark this area right here and this area right here and we're gonna make sure that he's actually at the front because yeah i'm afraid to, of him getting crushed so that we're just gonna destroy this since we have our areas marked and now we're just gonna insert these so we need two of these so we need one more and now we're just gonna put one right here and the other one right here and now th this is where the differences stop so that we just have to mark where the trees will grow and 
let's make sure to cover enough range. So we're just gonna make this a little bit taller just in case he gets, he's a little bit blind. And now we're just gonna insert all of these. So let's go and let's actually choose the area. So he's gonna chop down trees. And then we're just gonna set this one and this one. And now let's make it work. So this is how it's gonna work. So dude, become a lumberjack. So here we go. So he's gonna start planting. And it's just like the other ones. And make sure that he actually does go back after doing his tasks because he might actually accidentally get crushed so we have set this area as a safe area we're just gonna replicate this because we'll need it later on again so let's grab it and now we're just gonna make him move away from the trees once he's done planting because we don't want him to get crushed and then we could just get him to chop again and we're just gonna set the coordinates again so make sure the coordinates are right so here we go they're right and then we're just gonna do this again and now we're just gonna make him move away again just in case he gets crushed so let's do this and you don't really need to do this because i don't think he's actually gonna be on top of the sapling but you never know so now let's try this again so we have made the tree grow up and now he's gonna chop it down so dude chop it down oh no wonder he was confused no dude oh, i hate him i really hate him now holy frick what the oh okay he was just doing his job so apparently just make sure that you don't have any fancy decoration like i did so now he's doing his task properly and yeah he does chop down the entire tree which is freaking epic and just look at how tall this tree was i didn't even realize it was that tall and by the way this is why you sometimes need a vortex broom because now they're just gonna fight over it so it's finally time to make this guy a rude smith. So he's ready with his hammer and his grabber arm. And this is why I call this the insanity section. So there is a ton of instructions. And it's gonna probably explode my brain too. <laughs> and also I just noticed the witch hunter just came in here when I logged in again. I don't know what he's doing here. But let me explain what we're gonna do. And before I actually explain this, I'm gonna show you something you should know. So when using the runes of marking, you have to make sure that this stick right here is facing the right way so it has to be facing outwards because if i did it like this he would try to access the chest through there and he can't actually get the go through block so you have to do it like this so he can get to the block and for the rune scribing table you have to make sure that it's underground like this because he won't actually access it i've tried it before and you have to make sure that the stick is pointing upwards and one more thing you should do is you will need a rune scribing recipe so for this example the rune scribing recipe is for a head so yes he's gonna make other robots just so we're on the same page i'm gonna show you what this guy is supposed to do so he's supposed to pick up a non-fired room plate he's supposed to stick it into the room forge then he's supposed to wait 10 seconds and take it to the room scribing table and just leave it there then he's gonna go back into the chest to pick up the purified vintium ingot we need and then he's gonna superheat it and then he's gonna go back rune scribe this and then put it on the runic anvil and then he's gonna take whatever was here so you have the superheated ingot and he's gonna stick it onto here then he's gonna start hammering and then he'll take the final product into here and leave it here in the final chest and then he'll turn himself off this is already too much for my brain to handle but we're gonna continue on like soldiers hey it's me from the future again so yeah i may have made a mistake earlier and now you're gonna see a few different things later on in the video so these numbers were correct and i'm correcting them now so for the first chest you'll need two runes of marking for the rune forge you'll need four for the rune scribing table you'll need three for the runic anvil you'll need four for the chest you'll need one and for the lever you'll need one and by the way you should be aware that some of these things will be different depending on what you're making so it would usually be some vintium ingots and some superheated vintium ingots and the pattern of your choosing so for this example we're gonna use one unfired rune plate one rune pattern one purified vintium ingot one head pattern one superheated purified vintium ingot and one construct frame and also this shouldn't be on the rune scribing table it should be in your inventory because you're gonna use it in the load star so let's first take an item from container so the container is gonna be the first chest over here so we're just gonna put its rune marking over here and we're gonna put its unfired rune plate over here and now he's gonna take that into the rune forge 
So we're just gonna take our reforge marking, and here we go. So he has placed into container, and now you'll need a new command, which is wait five seconds. So you need two of these because it does take approximately ten seconds. And now that the item is ready, he's gonna take item from container, which is the finished room pattern, and he's gonna take it from the room forge. So here we have the room forge marking, and now we're just gonna move on to next step, which is place item into container. So he's gonna place it into the rune scribing table. So we're just gonna take our rune scribing table one over here, and here's where it gets complicated. So he's gonna go back to the first chest, and he's gonna take this purified vintium ingot right here, and then he's gonna place it into container, which is the rune forge. And you don't have to actually make him wait because th this will take care of itself. And now he's gonna actually start rune scribing. So this is the scribe rune command, and we're just gonna go in here. So this is where you need the rune scribing recipe. So he has now learned the rune scribing recipe and now we're just gonna put under the rune of marking for the rune scribing table and once he's done rune scribing he's gonna take from the rune scribing table so that is take item from container again so we're just gonna make him take this right here which is the finished product and we're gonna make him take it from the rune scribing table and now we're gonna actually place it into the runic anvil so you just need the runic anvil one and that is pretty much it for that one and now he's gonna take from the rune forge so here we have the superheated ink it and we are gonna put the rune forge marking over here and then he's gonna drop it into the runic anvil so yes it's getting easier from here on out and then he's just gonna forge a rune so this is his hammering state so we're just gonna make him forge the rune right here and we're just gonna put the runic anvil one right here and now we're just gonna make him deactivate himself dang ignore my big mistake so we're actually gonna take more from the container and then we're just gonna place it into the last chest so i did miscalculate and then we're just gonna make him deactivate himself so he's gonna take an item from the container which is the runic anvil and let us not forget the most important thing right here which is this construct head in the filter and then he's gonna drop it off into the final chest right here and then for this one right here, which is activate a block. He's gonna need one rune of marking from the lever right here. And now we are finally finished. And yeah, oh, my head hurts actually. <laughs> this was a lot of stress. But, uh, I, this was my least favorite part of this. But it's gonna pay off because we're gonna see this guy performing epic actions. And now it is your time to shine, dude. So I'm gonna cry if this didn't work out because yeah, I've been re-recording many bits like I just did right now. It, dude, dude, please, please work. Okay, so we're just gonna follow him along and since he has reinforced legs we could probably just ride him so we're just gonna actually ride him you know what we're just gonna leave him alone and we're just gonna watch him work from a distance so he should do his entire job perfectly or else i'm gonna delete something and he has grabbed it he is putting it there and now he's gonna go back to get the ingot he's gonna super heat the ingot now he's going to start rune scribing. And by the way, you can't see what they're doing. And they don't even need a hammer or a chisel or anything else. They're completely independent. They just have, have a hammer. I don't know where his chisel is. Probably using his other arm. And see what I bet? So this is ready. While he's doing this, and it's actually going to take him a while. Our buddy here is done. And now he's going to take this up to runic anvil. He's going to grab the ingot. He's going to hopefully place it on top. And now he's going to start hammering. And he finally did it successfully so this is going according to plan yes this is so relieving now he's gonna take it he's gonna put it in here oh he did it yeah boy you did it oh, this took so long I'm, i want to congratulate you soldier you did your job perfectly even though we already know what he made let's check out his first final product so here we have the construct frame head and this is what you need to build another head for another one of these constructs and by the way they do immediately break the room pattern after they're done he just completely deleted it out of existence because of how hard he ever did and earlier on they did show you that you could actually write your constructs and it is pretty awesome but there's a lot more that you can do with that and by the way it does require reinforced legs so you guys can get onto them and now i'm gonna use my construct control rod and i'm just gonna click on him 
click on the ground and now he's following me so that means that now once i right click i can get onto him and now i can start controlling him and he is pretty fast once you get on them and just look at him he's so flipping fast and you can also jump like a maniac so i'm just gonna go over here and i'm gonna try to get up here so let's try to do that and we are almost there and you know what i think he might need a little bit of a boost so let's just get onto here if it if it lets us so we're just gonna do this we're gonna jump at max and we almost got it so i'm just gonna try one last time or else i'm just gonna forget about it here we go we are on top and this guy is just amazing he knows acrobatics so now let me teach you about wall springs so wall springs will allow you to make these greater bolts right here and with these greater bolts you will be able to make some epic items like this armor set right here called the spell weaver set and then there's also other items that you can craft with it but there is mostly armor so i'm just gonna change to this armor so you can see that there's a large variety of types of armors and doesn't this look hardcore and they do have ability so this is absolutely awesome thing to see how fast i was going and here is where the magic happens so this is where you will craft everything and that is the eldred altar and the eldred altar is powered by wall springs and i'm gonna show you how to capture the wall springs so you can send the energy from over there all the way over here so you can just get all of those arbors and let's just get to it so once you're tier 3 you'll notice that there's a new section in your codex arcana and that is the eldred altar section and once you click on it it's absolutely empty because this book hates lower tier trashes i don't know why it, 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 i'm a lower tier trash actually too so now i'm just gonna enter the eldred wall spring section and in here you'll notice that there's a few items that you can craft and these are locked to the ancient console of the wizards which is the faction i'm currently in so this is why you're seeing it here and here is some basic information on the wall springs and all of the types and where you can find them but i'm gonna actually show you the wall springs myself so you guys can see how each one of them looks like and it is much more exciting than what it's in the book and i did totally forget about this but you will need some special fluids to actually see these wall springs so we have the eldran site unguent and it is a tier 3 item and it's for the ancient council of wizards so if you're not in the ancient council of wizards your next option is the eldran site unguent and this one is for tier 4 so yep that is very unfortunate and then they do small disgusting so uh, i'm just gonna drink this and here we go we can finally see the arcane wall springs it just tastes so bad it makes you see things that you never would be able to see so first we have the arcane wall spring and this might be one of my favorites just look at it it looks so magical and the next one we have is the earth wellspring and you'll see a bunch of leaves and all of that because yep, it, it, it is obviously earth then we have water which has a bunch of bubbles going through and then we have the wind wellspring which has a bunch of air <laughs> yeah i don't keep, need to keep explaining this then we have the fire one and just look at how epic this one looks and then we have the ender wellspring and i think this might be my second favorite or the fire one i am not sure and then the last one we have is the unknown wellspring so if you enable it in the configs this will turn into either of these and by the way this doesn't actually do anything and you have to be careful because it does look similar to the wind one and just make sure that the wind one is the new one and the glowing thick one is the <laughs> unknown wellspring just look at how thick that one is now i'm gonna show you two ways to track down some wellsprings so we have this magic stick right here don't point to the nearest wellspring and it looks like it's gonna poke your eyes out and then we got this spell right here which allows you to choose multiple well springs and i'm not gonna cover it yet since it's wizard's console only so i'll be covering the well spring dowsing rod since any faction can craft it so i'm just gonna go into codex or kind of forget everything that was here and we're just gonna go over here to eldred altar and eldred well springs and here once you're at tier four you'll see the well spring dowsing rod and the way you craft it is which one 
stick, one compass, one ventium dust, and one tabaractic link. And yes, I still don't know how to spell it, and you probably already know the rest, so I'm just gonna go straight into it. And let's actually use the Wellspring Dowsing Rod. So I'm not gonna let go, and I'm gonna right click without letting go. And it's literally gonna grab your neck and twist in the direction, or just uh, pull your arms. I don't know what I'm even talking about. And the nearest Wellspring is somewhere around here, so we're just gonna keep following it. And yes, if you don't let go, you're gonna go really, really slow. So it's a better idea to just let it go and keep walking. So we're just gonna keep walking and use it every once in a while. And now we're gonna turn around. And that's because there's a wellspring right here. And yes, you don't even need to travel to a new area. The wellsprings will spawn in places you've already been to, which is pretty epic. Now, here's the next way to find some wellsprings. And that is using this spell right here, which is the Eldrin Flight spell. And I've told you earlier, it's wizard console only so if you're not a wizard's console you can't actually make this but currently i have self and eldrin flight so that means that uh, i can just use it already so we're just gonna right click and it'll show you every single possible wellspring you can go to so we're just gonna choose that one over there it's literally gonna eat you through every wall and just uh yeah spasm out i'm sorry if, if, if it's spasming out i'm not sure if it's my render distance or something but here we go so we have landed we're gonna drink our juice and okay yeah we already drank the juice and here we have a wellspring now before crafting your epic armor you first have to capture the wellspring so capture it means that you're gonna collect its energy and send it into the void and i'm gonna show you how to build this i'm gonna go over here to eldrin altar and then capturing eldrin wellsprings and here we have everything so once you're tier four you unlock this section and we're just gonna go straight to this one where it tells you the list of materials and by the way you can actually use the white version and i'll show you what i mean by that uh, let's actually place it so you have to make sure that this is actually centered so yeah it's a little bit difficult at the beginning so i'm gonna show you another method because this is gonna drive me insane and yeah before showing you what i think is the easiest method i forgot something so you all need a refraction lens and you'll need a specific refraction lens for each individual wellspring so for this one we obviously need the air one and for this specific lens you'll need one mode of air four purified vintium ingots and four white stained glass and then you just need the shapes for the mana weaving altar and here we go so we're just gonna build four blocks upwards so we're just gonna place four of these right here and now we're just gonna place this lens up here so let's place it right here and now you may be wondering where is the crafting thing so we're just gonna right click on the mirror and as you can see it will actually show you everything and yeah make sure that your hand is empty and that we have perfectly centered it and i'm just gonna clear the effect so you guys can see how this is gonna work so we're just gonna start building and placing these columns and oh yeah here is the crafting recipe for the columns i don't know why but my brain almost had a stroke reading this crafting recipe but anyway the way you craft this is with four ritual runes of metal one arcade sandstone two arcade sandstone walls and one hopper and then just this eldra drift right here and all of the shapes down here and by the way i'm not going to show the recipe for all of the chabrite things over here so we're just going to search up chabrite and here you'll see all of the sandstone recipes and everything and now let me finish the crafting recipe i, I don't know why i just placed that and now let me just go in here so you just need one chabrite sandstone four purple glyphs and one ender pro and just the shapes required and before i continue let me show you something so i'm gonna go down here and you can use the chabrite sandstone instead of the chabrite stone if you want but i'm gonna use the chabrite stone since it does look more epic and it's telling us in the instructions so let's actually place all of these things and i'll be right back And now let me just continue on like normal. So I'm going to show you something that is very finicky. So we're just going to point in this direction. And you'll notice that it does point in whatever direction you're looking at. So please be aware that you have to face in the right direction. And same applies for the corners. And the corners are actually worse because I have to find the correct orientation. Almost none of the orientations work. But as you can see, you can guide yourself using your inventory because it's just pointing like an L. So let's just do that and let's match it up so we're just gonna keep spinning in circles and here we have almost completed it 
But now we need to change, which is the most annoying part. Just look at how annoying it is. Actually, it is not too bad, and I'm just gonna skip ahead. So we have captured the wellspring, and just look at it. All of the energy is going straight into the void, and you can confirm this is the void because look at it. It looks like the end, and it just looks so epic. But let's just ignore the fact, and let's go straight into our boy, the Oculus. And I don't know why I say inside. I mean, click on him, and we're just gonna go over here to Infinity's Faction Dem power and here we go so for air we have 20.4 percent Eldred wellspring energy and before we actually get into crafting with this magical energy i'm gonna show you something and the, the dude is not gonna shut up is he i think he's gonna keep doing it uh, yep he's gonna keep doing it but anyway we're just gonna go over here and you may have noticed that i have some arcade wellspring energy and that's because i've built another wellspring prism and yes that's what they're called but something you may have noticed is the wellspring energy for arcade is much weaker than the wind one so we're just gonna activate one more to show you that you can increase that so we're just gonna destroy all of this go back to our boy and now we're just gonna open it again and as you can see we have 23.9 percent so yeah it doesn't increase that much and each one will have a different amount all right so you can reset the elder altar that was here and i'm gonna punch this side out of existence and let me now show you how to set this up so we're just gonna go over here to elder altar and we're gonna go to elder altar right here so yep double elder altar and here you'll see that we have this invisible thing again so we're just gonna place this boy right here and it should be placed and now we're just gonna open the codex or card again and here's the crafting recipe so yeah you can probably read through all of this i'm kind of bored of saying the crafting recipes over and over and then one more thing you'll need is this eldritch conduct and this eldritch conduct is crafted with one mode of ender one chabarite gem one chabarite stone and any of these bolts over here so yep it depends on which bolt you're gonna use for crafting but anyway, let's actually start building this. So let's start by placing the first piece, which is the Eldred Altar itself. Even though it doesn't show all of these things floating around, it is the correct one. So here we go. So it has advanced. And then you just need to place a bunch of pedestals around it. So just in this position like this. And we are almost done. So two more. And now this is complete. And we can actually start crafting things. But before we do that, we need this thing right here, which I've already shown you. So we're going to use the arcade wood. And we're going to place it. And just look at how cool this thing looks. It's just, I love the glowingness. And I think each one is a little bit different. But I'm not sure yet. Because yeah, I, 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 I'm kind of unprepared sometimes. And now let's actually craft the boat. So we're just going to go back over here. And we're going to go to this part over here so we have the greater bolts over here and here it will show you everything you need to know so we want this greater bolt of magic so we can craft some cool armor so we just need one bolt of magic and two books in this position like this and yeah down here it does tell you the percentage of wellspring energy required and here it'll tell you the affinity for the wellspring energy and now we can actually start doing it so let's place a bolt of magic right here and place a book over here and a book over here and now let's just right click and just look at it it's so awesome all of this magical energy is gonna float around the bugs are gonna disintegrate including the boat and then they're gonna start fusing with each other and this will start giving it energy until we have the boat and the boat will be coming eventually once these things mix and just look at how epic that was and now we have or greater mode of magic so we can start crafting some armor. Now, this is probably the moment you've been waiting for. We're finally gonna make some armor. So we're just gonna go into the Codex Arcana. We're gonna go back to Eldred Altar. And here you'll see all of the armors you can craft. And actually, that's a lie. You can only craft the armor from your faction. Because it'll literally just tell you no. I've actually tested it. It doesn't do anything. It just says no. So we're just gonna go over here to the Spellweaver's armor. And here we have all of the crafting recipes and now let's actually start crafting this armor because this is gonna be epic so we're just gonna put our mage's armor right here in the middle and now let's start placing it so we'll need one chain mail two nether stars two greater bolts of magic see they were necessary for this and then one arcane rune right here 
one runic silk right here and one infused thread right here and now it's actually activated by just putting the shirt in the middle and we've already done that so let's just right click with her empty and yeah i kind of forgot about that and after a while here we have our armor so this is just epic we're just gonna wear it and this is one of my favorite armors and just look at me i look so buff and i look like the greatest magic user of all time but you know what let's actually grab the rest of the set and you may have noticed that some of these armor pieces do require more than one infinity so all of them except the chest plate will require more than one affinity and that is easily resolvable so we're just gonna place an Eldrin conduct of window over here we're just gonna make this craft itself and as you can see it starts glowing and it's gonna send its energy to so here we go so both of them have connected and they're starting to craft these boots right here and i don't need to show you this because i've already shown you how awesome this is and just like i showed you earlier once you actually wear the entire set you will get a set bonus so let's just wear this final piece and now we have the set bonus. So our mana has gone up. A lot of things have gone up. And we can actually fly in survival. Although it's probably the slowest flight I've ever seen. It is so cool that you can just go around flying in your world. And shooting magic from up here. Here's the test I wanted to. So I want to jump off from up there. And as you can see you're completely protected from fall damage now. So I am a beast of a magical being. Just look at me. I look like I'm your supreme mode overlord it's finally time to summon and fight this monster's boss to the death and his name is the all father and yes his name is absolutely epic but i'm gonna show you the ritual so the ritual is called the ritual of odin's call and yes i do know it says odin over here but i promise you his boss bar to say the all father so that means that i'm right and i'm not gonna show you the ritual because you will probably already know how to set up rituals by this point but you know what something you should know about the ritual is it requires a thunderstorm so me and horse can have modified the satellite dish over there so it can actually summon a thunderstorm and yeah it's basically just a weather machine and there's a lot of complexity when it, that went into it so yeah it's a little bit confusing to explain but you know what no need to explain it so horse again, are you ready to summon the lightning hammer yeah i am also i think i might go and sing with so much power uh, yeah horse again, i would go and sing with power too but now it's time to actually start the countdown so three two one and there we go so isn't that epic and now it's thundering so we're ready to start this ritual also if you notice that your ritual looks a little bit off it's because you actually have to make sure that you don't set it to fabulous you need to set it to fast or fancy and now the glowing orbs are back and the glowing lines are back too and it just looks so much more awesome but you know what let's actually summon the order. so we're just gonna drop this shape and it should summon him immediately so he's gonna come down from the sky and come down in the godly manner just look at him it just looks so awesome and now he's down here and yeah the bifrost is awesome too i forgot to mention that part and here we go so he's gonna grab his axe and he's just gonna start smacking you and he's also gonna use some spells every once in a while so here we hit he got hit us with the uh, arcane magic and yeah i'm sorry i'm concentrating on talking and at the same time just uh I'm fighting this dude so i i it's really a bad combination once i'm actually doing this and by the way he will apply a few effects but that's from the axe and uh, probably spells i'm not sure which ones but let's just keep fighting this dude and by the way in case you were wondering yeah he actually does despawn once you come back so uh, make sure that you don't actually die while fighting him by the way if you thought i took that fighting i was just kidding i i really uh, i was just uh, talking a lot and yeah um, okay you know what i have no excuse but now that we're done he's gonna say eat the warriors you have proven your valor this day i offer this axe as a reward for your prowess take it with my blessing all right so yeah i'm not too great at reading and this guy's just gonna come back and go back to the doors they mentioned i don't know what it's called really you gotta be kidding me it's just, just called asgard but now we have this axe over here and this axe is absolutely overpowered and let's actually fight a few things with it so let me finally introduce you to the all father's axe so this has 50 attack damage and it has five attack speed and it is pretty overpowered because you could actually hit some mobs twice so there are two ways to use this 
So first we're just gonna spawn a creeper and we're just gonna right click and it's just gonna launch it and it's gonna hit him twice and he's gonna die because yeah that, it is that extremely overpowered and we're also gonna fight him the normal way so we're just gonna left click and actually smack him and yeah be careful because it is a creeper you obviously already know this and if you're throwing it, there's something you should also an Enderman won't actually dodge this. And he'll just let himself get smacked and he's gonna die immediately because yeah, that's what he deserves for coming back and oh uh -huh. Yeah, that is absolutely terrifying because though he's still playing. And also have you noticed how epic this axe looks? I'm just gonna throw it and oh it looks like I'm throwing up some frost and I'm like a dra frost dragon and you know what? I don't need to keep explaining how awesome it looks. And even though it's a little bit finished you can't actually hit things through walls so here we have hit the other man and now he's dead and yeah and it is so awesome that you can get this through a wall I, I, i'm just so impressed with this weapon and as promised i'm gonna show you some of the things added in the 1.18 update and also i'll be showing you some of the things being added in the future this mod and this mod is gonna keep getting more and more epic and also i just realized something this tower looks so amazing in the 1.18 trade just look Look at it, looks so amazing. And you know what? I'm getting distracted, so let's get back to this. So, first off, we have some changes in the textures. So, we're just gonna open our Codex Arcata. And here you'll see that has been retextured a little bit. The colors have been changed, and there hasn't really been that much change in this. And now I'm gonna go back to the Chamorite Man Weaver's Wand. And yes, this is gonna be all over the place. And I'm just gonna keep jumping between things. So, we're just gonna open the Man Weaver's Wand by control right clicking, lots of new UI. And it still works exactly the same, except you just left click to. To get it up here and once you left click to get it up here you can just change it like normal and even change the name and you know what that it, it just looks like you can change the name but you can't and i also love this scrolly over here and yeah it still hasn't had any major changes and now here we have some of the retextured things and also the new blocks so we have the redstone infused blocks now so we have the redstone infused stone and we have the redstone infused sandstone and yeah i don't need to say it because it's up there but you know what i don't even care and yeah i just really love both of these and then we have the new crystals and the new crystals look so much better they look less cartoony and more magical just look at them and there's so many varieties of colors and yes these are all the colors and then we have this exhibition pedestal and on top of that we have a warding candle and as you can see it just tells you the name of whatever's on it and we're just gonna grab the warding candle place it down here and you can see that it just looks so much better now and also i'm gonna light it so you guys can see so let's light this and it's exactly the same on the tip but the rest is upgraded and now we're just gonna get rid of all of this i wouldn't say upgrade it but just looking much better and we also have the load star and this is by favorite retexturing just look at it it has a freaking animation and everything it just looks so great and there's more than just texture changes so if we go to the load store we actually have new commands <laughs> yes some of the fingers may be a little bit destroyed but they're probably gonna be fixed eventually and we have a viewer command so we have craft so craft is probably the easiest one for you guys but it's probably gonna be harder for crush since crush is still probably work in progress because if we go to construct section and we go over here to the section yeah let me see so here we have the crush section and it's not going to show you any of the recipes but some of these are self-explanatory and that's why i could show them to you right now so here we have this command which is the crush one i've just told you and you also have to make sure that you mark a grindstone for this to work and then you just make it grab whatever you wanted to grind so we wanted to grind our bones and yeah that sounds slightly disturbing and then we just want him to collect whatever he just got from it and just place it in here you know what i'm gonna actually just show you so it won't be so complicated to explain so here we're gonna make him work so right click on him right click on the load star he's gonna start working he's gonna grab the bone and he's gonna slowly start grinding it in here and bro you, you don't have to be up there and think he's just gonna return whatever product he had 
into the trash can over here and we like he also does drop some of the bones on the side so here we have it he has dropped the bone heel on the ground and the broom is just gonna pick it up at while i call a trash can now i'm gonna show you one of the new books added to the mod and it is this book right here which is the book of marks and it allows you to store your runes of markings so you no longer have to have your entire inventory filled with them and the way you craft it is with one rune pattern of marking two paper and three leather and now the way you open it is just exactly like the spell book you just control and then right click and it should open up the menu over here and here you have all of your runes of markings and you can also use it like the spell book and click z and change between them and you may be wondering why do you need this if you can't even use them well that's because you need to put it in your offhand and you need a spell or ritual that requires the runes and now i'm gonna use this spell right here which is the recall spell and that means that once i right click it's gonna teleport me to whatever rune i was holding so just look at the view up here it looks so freaking amazing and i really love the new terrain and also i'm just gonna switch between it so i'm gonna hold down z and yeah make sure that you're not holding any other book so hit z with an empty hand and here we'll just switch to this one right here and we're just gonna use it again and we're back down here with the tower in front of us and here we have one last thing i wanted to show you and it is the illusion block and this is a work in progress so there's currently no crafting recipe and it may be a little bit buggy but let's start placing it so if you place it on a block it actually replicates the block and if you even place it on top of those blocks they replicate and they may look like normal blocks until you go through them so yep they're just ghost blocks and you have to be careful once you're actually doing this in the early phases because yep we're just gonna do this so i'm just gonna place some glass over here and i'm just gonna place one of these illusion blocks up here and you can just see through your entire world and it is pretty cool and I, I wish that it could actually keep that effect in probably with another block or something but you know what I'm rambling on and I'm just gonna stop and now I'm gonna show you some of the things being added to the bot in the future and there's a few exciting things that are going to happen but here I'm gonna show you some of the things that are gonna be added and yes I am not a developer so don't expect me to know everything and I am getting all of my information from the discord server so the link is gonna be in the description below and they'll be able to help you with many other questions you may have but anyway let's enter this clip right here and this is for the mana weave cache and yes these are gonna be structures they're gonna spot around your world and just look at it it looks so awesome and yes this is a video so uh, yeah i'm not really controlling anything and this guy is just gonna keep exploring it and yeah by the way it is compatible with loot or so that is a mod that allows multiple players to get different loot from the same treasure so that means that you will each have different treasure and it's gonna open with the mana weaving patterns and here we have the everything in the battle weave chassis and the video is over but i'm gonna keep talking so there's gonna also be a possibility for it to give you effects so they're gonna be buffs that last like 10 to 30 minutes it might be regeneration it might be a buff that actually renews your armor and repairs it slowly and there may be other effects and i'm taking everything from a discord server i'm sorry if i don't even know what i'm talking about and next up i'm just gonna show if you think so it looks like we're we're gonna actually have colored things in the bot so here we have some of the coloring and that means that we can change the coloring of your spell so see you, there's a lot of green coming out of this lightning and you also have the ability to cast different colors of the light spell and also even some of the lightning that is green and just look at it, it looks so awesome and next we just have this little place right here which seems like it's gonna be a new structure being added and also see the retextured room for it's looking so awesome and here we just have the last thing i wanted to show you and that is the constructs are going to be redesigned and the old stars are going to have different uis and just look at all of these things they look so awesomely drawn and here you just get a lot of complexity so probably this video is going to become outdated soon and you will be able to add more runes of markings to the patrol and that is pretty much it you know what that is not the last thing since i've been working on this mod for so long apparently there have been new sneak peeks so we will go through this dark tunnel and then they will enter the room and you'll see that the constructs now look absolutely amazing just look at that guy he's literally just coming to life and yeah he's getting electrocuted by all of the magic 
I think he's just gonna wake up and just look at this new uh, construct workbench. It just looks so amazing. And I see those weird particles. They just look so awesome. And now the dance party. So, yeah, this is the one part that I love the most. Uh, yeah, there are just gonna be different types of constructs. And I'm just gonna stop it after a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, this is actually pretty funny. And they're gonna do plenty of new tasks that they have never been able to do. And yes, oh my god, that is making me dizzy just spinning. But there, it's just gonna be amazing. So, they're gonna no, not just dance. They're gonna do plenty of other things. So, here we go. This is the part I wanted to show you guys. So, just look at it. He just started fishing. That is amazing. And yes, I'm just gonna lower the volume a tiny bit. And here we have the farming constructs. And he just looks so awesome. And then we have this scene right here. Where he just goes underground and tries to grab some ores. And you know what? That is all I'm gonna show you. Because you probably want to watch the video on your own. And there are plenty of other things in the Discord now. Since, yeah, so much time has passed. So do check them out if you want to know everything that is being added in the future. So I was just about to do the outro. And the horse again just told me to go out here to wind turbine. And you gotta be kidding me. Don't tell me that. Yeah, that is definitely parkour. Yeah, but it looks absolutely impossible. You know what they think horse again? Yeah, horse again definitely thought about that. Horse against infernal set parkour course. Oh no, this is gonna be a nightmare. Although it does look a bit easy, but I, I just definitely still get this. And get, okay, you know what? This chest just put him into survival mode. You know what? I think I'm gonna read the book first. And you know what? Let's just grab the set. Oh, let's just read Horsekin's book. I have made this I have made this parkour course for you. The only thing you're allowed to use in this course is the infernal set, and you have to be in survival mode. Yeah, the chest definitely made sure of that there's also something special at the end of this course good luck smiley face oh no uh, yeah the smiley face kind of scares me because i know that there's something about uh, the horse again can't just uh, uh you know what i'm just gonna do this oh, let's just go up here and yes uh, i did have to go to peaceful uh, just in case something happened because yeah i definitely knew the horse again had something in mind Let's just go to this one. Go to this one. Oh, you know what? Yeah, this is probably gonna take a while. Uh, see, I told you I suck at this. Alright, so let's try this again. So we're just gonna go over here again. And here is the last one. Okay. Yeah, this one does seem difficult. Oh, I finally made it till now. Okay. Yeah, no jumping. So I think that uh, Yeah, I think I have enough speed to make it across. Uh, okay. Three. Two, one, ah, oh, oh, we made it. Oh, we almost fell off the edge. Ah, oh, I was so scared. So let's just open this up and, ooh, we have some freshly baked cookies and hot matter coffee. Ah, oh, yeah, this is so good. I, 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 for once, horse can do something this nice. Now, okay, return to start use shift after button. Why do I need to use shift? You know what? <laughs> I'm actually quite scared. So, oh my god. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna listen to Orsica just in case. And oh my. What the flip? I did not know this armor did that. Okay, you know what? Let's just check the crater. Oh my. You know what? Uh, yeah, this is my new favorite thing to do. You know what? Uh, I think I'm gonna do that to everything for the outro. Oh, I, 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 I really hate it that but yeah, it was definitely really fun. Anyway, that was it for the final part of my showcase on the Man and Art of Ice Pod. I know that's literally taken me two months to get both of these videos out, but I've been doing classes, and yeah, it wasn't mostly in classes. It was me trying to do a showcase that takes three hours and would go, which was literally impossible, and that's why you have a multi-part showcase, and they think I'm gonna do that for other showcases in the future, so you guys will have to wait for so long it literally looked like i abandoned my channel for some of you probably and yo the whole this tree is so on fire uh, yeah it's gonna burn down any moment so i better guess it better just end this before it completely burns down 
So don't forget to burn that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you happen to be enjoying my content. Let's try to get to 30 likes before I stomp on another tree and set it on fire. <laughs> oh no, yeah, that is too evil. But anyway, don't forget to have an awesome day or night and see you all later. Bye!